Mm. Ah, just, just, just pull out and just show me again. Sata block for Nanjana. Or it is Sata Kanto, it is Lali Kishe. Ah, it is a block. Or in a character, Takibo, Dita block. Or it is Takibo, Tinta, Chata, and Nikap Sata Bullet. This is X Junction. This is Long John Kong Long John Kong. What about the Tahunta Fali Research Group? Tango Tahunto, Jango Tahunto. Yeah, that is like too big, man. Hmm? I, it is, it should be some, could be a jack. No, this looks like a scat, man. Sure. We are working to conserve wildlife in Nagaland, a place of diverse people and habitats in Northeast India. The people of Nagaland, in each place that we have visited, have been open and helpful, guiding us through their often dense forests and sometimes sharing their law for tracking animals. The people of Nagaland are keen on protecting their wildlife and with their help, planning our movements from village to village became a much easier task. Wildlife conservation is not only about the science, but also about the willingness and cooperation of the people we work with. This is the story of how we teamed up with the people of Nagaland in their efforts to conserve wildlife in their beautiful state. Northeast India lies at the confluence of three biogeographical realms, the Indian, the Indo-Malayan, and the Indo-Chinese. It's also recognized as a biodiversity hotspot, the Indo-Burma Biodiversity Hotspot. Now, if you look at this region and move back in time, you will note that wide-ranging species such as tigers, elephants, would freely move between uh, source populations like what you have in, let's say, Kaziranga National Park in Northeast India, and the large swaths of habitat that are there in Myanmar. Now this connectivity unfortunately has been broken in the last 50 years or so and it's not because there isn't forest cover between Kaziranga National Park and uh, the large source of habitat in Myanmar. If you look at the state of Nagaland which intervenes this space primarily, it's a, uh, it's a 17,000 square kilometer state and 60 to 80 percent of the state is forested. The state is also home to 16 major tribes each having its own distinct language and culture. And all of these tribes have had traditionally a close affinity to nature and to natural resources. So the key is to try and find a balance uh, between achieving conservation in Nagaland while meeting the day-to-day -day livelihood needs of the people. There is a lot of interest for conservation and there are a lot of efforts that go into conservation. We want to make sure that those efforts have the best impacts and the most long-lasting impacts. That means those efforts need to be targeted at the ideal locations, at the ideal conservation activities, uh, the most imminent threats to conservation. And when you use the best available science to prioritize such locations and conservation activities, that is science-based conservation. And that is one of the basic tenets of our program. We want to cover entire Nagaland by selecting different villages from each part of the state. Generally selected by going on a scout to look for the current state of the forest, coupling with satellite and local information which is already available. Once the village with a promising habitat is identified, we approach village council, which is a local administrative body, uh, speaking to these council members gives us an initial understanding about their interest and willingness to conduct such conservation efforts in the village. Science-based conservation can have a great impact in wildlife conservation in Nagaland. Uh, it can become the main tool to reach out to the people and spread awareness. For example, getting to know what you have in your land, how many species you have in your land, how many species are threatened in your land. All these examples can, uh, can be of great importance and can uh, to reach out to the people and re make them realize the importance of wildlife conservation in Nagaland. So we do extensive ecological surveys using state-of-the-art methodologies to find out what are those locations which are most important for animals, for them to survive, for them to move. Um, 
we add that to extensive social surveys to find out where the support for conservation is maximum. And when you overlay these two layers, you get priority locations for conservation. Conducting uh, the ecological surveys in different villages in Nagaland is a lot of fun. You get to roam around the forest, you get to explore the forests of Nagaland, you get to see the landscape. primary component of uh, the project in Nagaland is to look at the distribution of different mammal species across Nagaland. Uh, so for this what we look at is how populations of different species of mammals, uh, how they fare in uh, different villages across Nagaland. Uh, the species that uh, we are looking at primarily are ungulate species and adding to this we also look at elephants, we also look at uh, carnivores and if uh, possible we also look at primates. Uh, what this particular component involves us to do then is to conduct ecological surveys inside the forests of uh, those villages that uh, we select for the project. So the ecological surveys that we carry out, uh, they require about five to six days to complete. Uh, so when we're doing these ecological surveys, the first thing that we do, since it's usually a new area for us, it's a new village for us, we spend the first day scouting and mapping the boundaries of the village forest, uh, trying to figure out uh, where and uh, how best to approach the forest during our surveys. Then uh, after that, for the next four days or so, we split ourselves usually into two groups and each group is then accompanied by uh, a guide from uh, the village, from the local village, who knows how to get around in the forest and who knows the forest. So uh, he shows us uh, basically uh, different tracks and trails in the forest and during these four days uh, we walk in the forest and we record all the information that we get uh, regarding uh, animal presence inside the forest. The information that we collect it includes uh, hoof marks, uh, pug marks, uh, claw marks and scat or animal dung and animal droppings and of course uh, also direct sighting. So in addition to uh, this information that we collect on animal presence, we also collect information regarding the forest characteristics such as canopy cover of the forest or maybe tree density of the forest in order that uh, we may try to understand what factors uh, inside the forest influences the presence of different species of mammals. Uh, however, uh, there are few challenges that come with it. For one, uh, it's a completely new forest area every time we go into a new village and we're not familiar with the forest area and we also have a limited time for scouting so trying to move around the forest, trying to enter the forest can be difficult at times. And the second thing is that uh, Nagaland uh, has difficult terrain. It's a hill state and especially if you, when you move towards the eastern part of the states, uh, the hills get, they get really steep and so that can uh, be problematic at uh, times. Apart from those challenges, not many other challenges, but one thing is that we don't see a lot of direct sightings of animals in Nagaland. So we, we're highly dependent, our information is highly dependent on animal signs. So we need uh, people with us who can uh, walk the forest and who can identify animal signs. We found Sambar, we found Manke. And? In a lot of plantations. <laughs> One more uh, sub-component within the ecological survey is that uh, we're interested in also getting uh, photographic evidence of different uh, animal species, different uh, mammal species that are found in uh, the different villages of Nagaland. So uh, what we uh, are doing is in a few selected villages, we're conducting uh, camera trapping where we keep camera traps inside the forests, which are a motion triggered and so if any uh, animal passes in front of them you get a picture of that animal and so we can identify it when we get it back. So we put these camera traps for a period of about 10 days in a few selected villages uh, in Nagaland and uh, also in the future if possible uh, we hope to be able to carry out a more uh, a much more dedicated camera trapping uh, survey. It 
one part of the project in Nagaland is a social survey. So in the social survey, we've designed a questionnaire to supplement the ecological surveys that we've been doing in each village forest. So we spend about a week doing the uh, ecological surveys, but of course we can't find out all the information present in the, in the forest. So in order to know which animals are present in the forest or which animals were present in the past, we ask or interview about 20 people from the village. Apart from that, we also interview two people from the village administration, usually the village council. And we ask them regarding the distribution of animals there, which animals are found now, which animals have they seen, whether they can identify the animals that we're asking them about or not. Uh, in addition to this, we also ask them how willing they are to conserve animals, how willing they are to conserve their forests. And we ask them in what way that we as an organization or maybe the government also can help them in order that their way of living is more conducive to conservation. So this project in Nagaland has been very interesting. We've actually had to go in to new villages, places that we're not familiar with, and meet new people. And this has been a bit of a challenge for us because we've had to develop completely new relationships with the people in these villages and their administration. We don't always have a point of contact there. The long-term goal uh, of our project is to realize a vision, a vision of reconnecting wildlife populations in Northeast India with those of Myanmar. Uh, this may take a while, but in the process, uh, we hope to at least identify important locations where we can work closely with local communities to try and help them conserve their forests. Um, one of the greatest uh, challenges that I might have experienced in the few years that I have been working here in Nagaland is the fact that um, I was a little startled by the fact that our community, which uh, once revered um, nature, once revered um, uh, you know, our surroundings, uh, is, has begun to look upon this very source of life as, um, as an economic uh, gain as an economic activity and so there's a world of difference between looking at the source of life as, as life-giving and as something to be to gain economically from and this also has I think um, uh, morphed and translated our understanding of uh, our, our, our wildlife which we take for granted and that this penchant for hunting for bushmeat is stemming from the very fact that we are um, bereft of knowledge of our surroundings. So I think to overcome these factors, uh, there is a need for greater engagement with communities from people who understand and know about the environment and nature. And there is a need to create awareness so that people can take their own decisions. And I strongly believe that once the truth is given, that uh, the truth speaks for itself and that people will make the right decisions about sustainable lifestyles and sustainable practices. So hunting has always been a part of the Naga culture, but people somehow lived in harmony with, with nature. But eventually with the introduction of modern weapons, uh, it has become easier for the people to hunt. And people has also started using hunting as a sport. So reaching out to the people and spreading awareness has become a great challenge and the need of the hour because uh, wildlife con conservation is a new agenda in Nagaland. I conservation conservation Trisal Nishina Hojase, Kindo Forest Day, Fire Nohaleva, you do hunting ban corral, especially Trigupan Corato Ale, Charlie Sal Probi Bishi Hojase, to it to conjure Corato Bishi, it to Halpa Sekile, Trigupando, Poila to Ale, Upor Fale, Bristing Great Akan Batade, Kindo Ajagale to Ushode, Busti Ushode Aikene, Batabi Diace. Poilado Manuke Poilagine, the man be not a care. As you can do the cabby, the kiss I say, I wrote to 
কন্ট্রি পুরা তো সবই ভাল লাগে আছে এটা তো আর হান্টিং তো বেশি দূর পুরা তো কথা মিলাবলে দিগদার পাই যাইছে কিলে এই ফোর ফাদার খানো আমি এখন লাগা ট্রেডিশনাল নিচিনা হে লাগি যাইছে হান্টিং হান্টার খান তো বেশি কিনা সমঝাবলে দুঃখ পাইছে কিন্তু এটা তো ইয়ারলি উইন্টার সিজনতে অল্প দিন খুলব আর বান করা তো শুরু হয়ে যাইছে তো এটা তো অল্প তো পয়লা পরা বেশি ইম্প্রুভমেন্ট দিয়ে আর বেশি জনবি বেশি উঠলা তো খুশি পাই আছে আমি এখন আর বেশি মিলিলি তো তাই কারণ এই তিন নিচিনা আমি খান নিচিনা আরাম পাব সব কি এই খালি আমি নয় কিনা সব আরাম পাবর কারণে খুশি করব লাগে কই না এটাই ভাবনা করে The state of Nagaland is currently witnessing a conservation movement. People in their own forests and lands want to conserve the wildlife that is there. And we want to support them in this process and it's been really encouraging to see the positive engagement that we have witnessed during our travels through Nagaland. For example, we were conducting a conservation awareness program in one of the villages in Nagaland and at the end of the program, uh, the chairperson of the village council comes up to me and he says that you know we can completely and are happy to completely stop hunting in our village forest but we are nagas at the end of the day and we require a uh, protein of some form on a day to day basis so if you can help us in some way in meeting those requirements of ours uh, we are confident that we can completely stop hunting and and help uh, conserve the wildlife that is there in our forest so taking a leaf out of that book we are thinking of ways in which we can support the community to achieve this we are trying to set up piggeries fisheries poultry is even perhaps uh, such that we can meet the day to day protein requirements of the local communities while helping them wean themselves away from a traditional practice of hunting and relying on uh, wild animals as their source of protein uh, this basically uh, tells us something about you know the larger narrative of how the local communities in nagaland are realizing that what they had is now beginning to dwindle and they want to do something about conserving wildlife and it is our responsibility to help them in this process and we are trying to achieve this in an informed manner with our science telling us which are the important locations in which we need to invest our conservation efforts and thereafter working closely with the local communities to help them realize their own desire to conserve their forests and wildlife